Next into the den is Londoner Lisa Hickey. Cheers. Cheers. Good luck, guys. Hi. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> With a business that could turn arms, legs and torsos, as well as heads. I'm bringing in something that's a little unexpected. I think there's always a little bit of a stereotype and, you know, you just deal with it. But I think the dragon's reaction are going to be quite surprised. Hmm. Is this a pole dance or what? Tuka, I think you could have a go at this. I'm, I'm assuming that's why there's two. One with your name on it. <laughs> but Tuka Suleiman isn't the only one who's expected to perform. I'm just going to kind of get in my head a little bit, guys, and try and remember everything. So if I'm dead quiet, that's why... No. <laughs> no, no. So I'm feeling a little anxious, if I'm honest. However, um, I do know my figures, and I do hope that uh, nerves don't get the better of me. My turn. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my name's Lisa Hickey and I am the creator and owner of Grip and Glow. And I'm asking for £30,000 for a 10% share in my company. Grip and Glow is a sports grip and skincare brand designed for the pole fitness market. My pole journey started when I decided I was going to do just one fun class. 17 years later, it's still my chosen sport and hobby. But in 2010, I decided to turn that into a business and I opened my first pole fitness studio. So let me tell you about Grip and Glow. Grip and Glow started as a lockdown project for myself and my two teenagers. And so for business studies, we decided on creating a brand. For science, we did formulation and experimentation. But we soon realised that it wasn't just a project on paper. It was a real product with real brand identity. So we took steps to launch in November Sorry, in November 2020. And in our first year, we did a turnover of 52,000. So in uh, your little boxes there, you've actually got a sample of my full product range. So you've actually got the grip and glow that Kiana and Dan have just shown you how it works in terms of performance. Uh, we also have just a moisturizer, but that's our glow beautiful range. And I'd like to just thank Dan and Kiana for their amazing performance. Thank you. That was amazing. amazing. Well, yeah. Please ask them if you have any questions. I heard a few, when you were going down the pole, a bit of a noise. Is that part of the product that was holding you up on the pole so you didn't slip down it? Yeah, so that spray is what gives us the grip. So as pole dancers, moisturiser is like the devil for us. So to have a product that moisturises and gives us grip is really important for us. That drop and stuff that you saw me do, if I did that without it on my legs, I'd probably just hit the floor. <laughs> Can I try? Yeah, I think you should try I'm happy it. to try it. Yeah! A spray designed to offer pole dancers additional grip whilst keeping their skin moisturised is the proposal from Lisa Hickey. Your right arm up, nice and high. <laughs> Lisa is seeking £30,000 in return for a 10% share in her fitness and beauty business. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Stephen Bartlett has demonstrated his prowess with the pole. <laughs> Did I do that OK? No, that was perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much. But can Lisa get to grips with the dragons? All I managed to get from them was that there's a moisturising effect with the grip. Yeah. Is that the USP of what you've created? So, yes, have you got the grip and glow in your hand? Yes. That's pole specific. So right. that you're going to spray that on your body right. and that's going to stick you to the pole. And it's not going to have a drying effect on the skin at all. There's no alcohol in any of like our grip. So our unique, unique selling point is the ingredients. Yep. You pick up your Glow Beautiful. So yep. that is a hydration mist. Um, and it's also got hyaluronic acid and B5. And then you also have the body rehab range. So that's actually a range designed to, uh, for like body recovery, muscle aches and bruises. 
So who's who's actually developed the products? So we um, we started like as a family, um, but then after that, it's all been sent to a laboratory here in the UK um, for all of the formula testing. So you actually formulated at home during lockdown with your family? I did, That's yes. That's a lovely story. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa's products may have started life as a piece of homework, but Peter Jones is keen to establish whether the fitness and beauty entrepreneur knows her maths. Lisa, you say you turned over 52,000? Yes. So the 52,000... Who have you sold it to? So online sales um, uh, was obviously a large portion of that. Your direct online sales. And how much was that? That, I believe, was around 32,000 and the rest was wholesale. OK, and what are you forecasting this year now? To do. Well, with our new contracts and um, the wholesaler that we sell to mainly, they've actually started taking our whole product range now. So we're projecting around 100,000. And what's your sort of margin on that with the wholesaler? So we actually discount down by 45%. 45%. So what will be your gross margin on that 100k sales? I don't know that off the top of my head. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not, I, I this is, I'm a self-taught business person. Um, okay. So I have an accountant that normally does all these things for me. So are you going to be able to tell me how much money you're going to make on that 100K? Because this, sorry, Lisa, this could be a really short conversation because yeah. if I can't work out how much money your business is going to make, yeah. it becomes almost impossible to work out whether I can invest in it or not. Um. Yeah, I'm a little flustered. Sorry, I'm not sure. Um, can we come back to it? I know it sounds Come like back bad. to me on it. That yeah, be because... Yeah, sorry. It's all right. Thank you. Lisa has run into a temporary roadblock with her financial recall. And now Stephen Bartlett wants to know just how many customers her business can attract. My first initial concern when seeing this is is that this feels like a niche market? Yes. Is that... I appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Do you agree with that? No. How big is the market? Well, there's over 600 studios in the UK alone. Right. So, in terms of the actual number, um, it's a difficult one to give you because there isn't actually a database for that, so I can't give you an actual figure. But I believe that the products that we've got aren't necessarily pole-specific. OK, so... Which of this range do you actually think could sell outside of your core market? Well, I believe the Glow Beautiful range. This range here? Yes, yep. and the lotion and the body rehab. And that. So here's my view on that. Mm -hmm. I tried it. It smells lovely. It, I love the way you've packaged that, by Thank the way. Thank you. Um, and, I, and I love your story, but that's a different thing. But I tried it and it is really sticky. And yeah. if there's one thing I hate, about a body lotion, yeah. it is feeling sticky. Now, you need that for that. Yeah, yeah. The problem is trying to sell that outside of the market. I appreciate what you're saying, um, but the feedback actually on that, once it does actually is absorbed into the skin, it is, you know, it's actually very popular. I have to say, I agree with Deborah. I love how this looks oh, thank inside. You. That the attention to detail there is, it's a credit to you. However, on one hand, you're positioning yourself as a aid for people in fitness, and then on the other hand, this is competing as a com cosmetics beauty product. You know, yeah. the beauty market is a completely different, terrifying beast. I agree with you, and that's where your knowledge and experience comes in. But I need the entrepreneur to have the expertise as well. Yeah. Because, it, you know, I'm investing. I'm not taking up the role I'll... of CEO of your business. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. I completely agree with you. When you want to penetrate a saturated market, you want to be as narrow as a needle. I think you'll compromise this grip business by trying to be the jack of all trades. I think what you've done is, is wonderful and you're going to figure it out. Yeah. But until then, it's not an investable business for me. I wish you the very best, but Thank I'm going to say that I'm out. Thanks very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Lisa loses her first dragon. His earlier line of inquiry may have hit a dead end, but Peter Jones remains keen to revisit the entrepreneur's finances. I've sat here very quietly. Can I go back yeah. to my original question? You forecasted 100K sales. Yes. You've got a new wholesaler on board. Yes. 
What's your gross profit and net profit against that 100k sales forecast? I don't know. I'm going to be completely honest with you. And I look really silly. I no, no, do, do you know what? You're very honest. I am honest, And yeah. that's, that's a great quality to yeah. have. But as an investor, you want to make sure that when you hand over your money, that money doesn't dissolve like an Elksa Seltzer in a swimming pool. Absolutely. And my concern is that if you were to get money, when I ask you, how did we do last week? You, oh, well, I don't know. How, what was the profit wouldn't last happen. week? Wouldn't happen. I don't I, know. It genuinely wouldn't happen. Yeah, but I don't want to have to go to somebody else. No, no. Because this business can't sustain anybody. OK. So I'm sorry, I'm going to say that I'm out. OK. Uh, Lisa, um, it is very disappointing you couldn't come up with, uh, come up with your numbers. I know. I'm disappointed in myself. i <laughs> being honest with you. I have a dyslexic brain, so for me, sometimes retaining that information, and I could actually read it five times and still tell you the wrong thing anyway, but I apologise for that. Well, I, I think you've displayed your expertise in your field, and that is really, really important. But I can't invest without having a clue as to what the margins are looking like, how much profit we could make out of this. Yeah, I appreciate it. So I'm really sorry. I, I can't invest, Lisa. So I won't be, and I'm out. I think this is a niche business, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I think in terms of an investment opportunity, I'm not convinced there are stratospheric height opportunities in this business. Yeah. So I won't be investing today and I'm out. OK. But uh, well done on Thank where you've you. got to. Thank you. And keep going with it. Thanks very much. Thank you. Hi, Lisa. Hello. I think when you're starting a, a new business, it's not easy. No. You, you learn, you make mistakes. And the one thing which has come out of all this is that you're an entrepreneur. Thank you. Unfortunately, you know, you know, the opportunity that you've come in here with, it's not exciting. You, know, you haven't come in and said, right, I've got X amount of orders, I'll do 100 this coming year, half in the year after. And for that reason, I'm going to say I'm out. Thank you. Thank you Lisa, very much. Well done. Keep Thank going. Thank you. With it. Sadly for Lisa, a den deal has slipped through her grasp. When it came to her numbers, the fitness entrepreneur and dragons were simply poles apart. That is a great example that if you, even though you know your market, but you have no idea about the numbers, it's impossible to invest. Impossible. Do you know what, though? I've got to be honest, I did respect her honesty. I wish that I'd kind of chased up my accountant a little bit more for those figures, but... To be here today was amazing um, and I'm, I'm proud of myself, I'm proud of what we've done.